Good morning, everyone. Just some brief announcements before we get started. Uh, we're going to, in the summertime, start doing refreshments after church uh, for people who want to just stick around and talk to each other and also have some good food and drinks. Uh, we have refreshments for today, um, and I actually forget who's doing those refreshments. Does the people who are there doing it? Well, the Holy Spirit provides. So, uh, well, I know we're having refreshments today, so that will be outside in our little side yard. Um, <clears throat> but we do need more refreshments, people to sign up for those uh, from the coming Sundays. So we have a sign-up sheet in our hallway. So if you're interested in providing refreshments, it doesn't have to be anything crazy, um, just some light beverages and um, some snacks. So anyway, so if you're interested, please think about signing up. Um, also, on the 13th, we will be having a flag retirement ceremony at the park on Flag Day. There will be a flag retirement uh, ceremony at 6 p.m., and that will be in honor of Flag Day. So if you have a flag you'd like to be retired, um, we have a box downstairs, also in the hall, um, and you can bring your flags there. Just make sure you're bringing them before the 13th, um, and then those will be dropped off to be retired. Um, also, we just want to recognize our graduates um, who are, will be graduating this year, um, both from college and high school. So we have Brody Graff, um, graduated from Marywood University, um, Colin Pape, who's graduating from Fleetwood High School, Ramsey Ross, who's graduating from KU, Rachel Town, who graduated from NYU, and Ashley Wenzel, who graduated from Alvernia University. So we just wanted to congratulate all them and recognize them today as well. Um, do we have something? Oh, <laughs> sorry, I thought you were trying to get my attention. Um, also, uh, your left, my right, the screen is not working today, so we apologize about that. So hopefully your eyesight is good enough to reach over here. Um, if not, there are virtual um, bulletins that you can find. There's QR codes. I know that's a little complicated, but if you need help, I can always help you do that. You can take a picture with your phone and it'll pop up a bulletin if you prefer to have that on your uh, smartphone if you have that. Also, youth group tonight, uh, 4.30 to 6 is our elementary, middle school, and 6 to 8 is our high school. Um, and that being said, is there any other announcements? All right, great. Then please prepare your hearts for worship as we'll have a prelude um, by our organist, Bruce Rohrbach. Good morning. The prelude this morning is a uh, hymn tune from 1769. It's over 250 years old, and the paper's all yellow, and it's entitled uh, Italian Hymn.
Please stand. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And also with you. Enter in all you questioners, believers, and questioning believers. And bodies be filled with the wild and untamable spirit of a God that won't be boxed in. Come and worship the God of multitudes and multiplicities. You belong in this place. Creation displays the glory of God, but our sin keeps us from rejoicing in the love that God reveals. Yet Christ, Jesus, the Son, carried our sins on the cross, and the Holy Spirit breathed new life into us so that we can praise God, our Maker, Savior, and life-giving Lover. Let us confess our sins that we may receive such grace. God, who is three in one, we confess that we have turned away from you. We gaze upon ourselves and the works of our hands as if we and they are worthy of worship. We take your creation into our hands, not to care for it, but to use it and then to discard it. We go to the indigenous people who have occupied the land not to serve, but to press them into our service. We do not deserve that you would even notice us, but we pray for mercy because you are merciful. Flame of love, purify us from sin. Eternal now, lead us to your truth. Risen one, baptize us into union with you. Transform us, Trinitarian God, into faithful disciples, who worship you and seek to serve you alone. Amen. The Holy One of Israel, the Redeemer of all the world, and the Holy Spirit who comes as the breath of new life, forgets the sins of all who repent. I declare to you, therefore, that you are forgiven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Father and Mother of all. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Yourself as one God in three persons, a mighty, creative, life generating presence who invites your creation to join you. Catch us up in your love and lead us into your world to call others to follow you with joy and praises. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with, with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding the seed of every kind and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in, in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky, so God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness, 
and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with seeds in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. There was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you, with all of you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be Now the Holy, Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So that creation story, I love that story. It's funny because it's very long, so then they made the gospel and the, the New Testament passage really, really <laughs> tiny to make up for it. Um, but that's a great story. Um, and not everyone knows this, but it's a poem. It was written as a poem. Um, and there's two creation stories in the Bible. A little interesting Bible fact. So that's the first one. And then there's a second story um, that has some other components maybe you heard in Sunday school class that maybe was skipped over in this one. Uh, but there's two creation accounts. And what I like about this one, too, is this one talks a lot about how creation is good. 
And it makes me think of, I don't even know what comedy movie is, but when they used to go, it's good. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know what comedy it comes from, but I was thinking about that, you know, God said it was good, it was good. And so you have livestock and animals and it was good. And you have, you know, light and night and that was good. And so you have all these things that we're talking about how creation is good. And then we get to humanity, we get to us, all and all that encompasses, which God encompasses all of that, which is kind of interesting and hard to put a wrap our heads around how God can encompass not just man or not just woman, but all of humanity and kind of encompasses all those things and the complications and all the, the most amazing nature of our creation in that. But it talks about how not only was create, was humanity good, but does anyone remember there was an extra little uh, thing added to that good? Oh, humanity was very good. And that's the only part of that creation story where God says it was very good. And so I just wanted to ask a question. What are ways, and part of that, why this poem is written the way it was, is a very well-written poem, is because humanity comes at that end point to kind of show how God is kind of saying, I'm giving you some of this dominion. You got a little bit of this control now. You get to kind of take care of this creation. This creation is for you. So how do we care for creation? What are ways that we can care for our world? Because if God thinks it's good, then so should we. So what are ways that we can care for our creation? Any, it could be any of the things that are, that are listed in the creation that God created. Ooh, taking care of habitat. Yes, that's a great one. Sean, in the back here. Beautiful one. Yes, our creation includes humans, right? So taking care of our neighbors, loving our neighbors. That's a great one, too. We're part of creation. Yes. Don't waste resources. That's a great one, too. Don't be greedy with our resources. Anybody else? You can just shout them out, too, if you have any others. All right, well, we know there's a lot, but, <laughs> but there's a lot of ways we can care for our creation. Um, and that includes each other, that we care for each other. Because when we look at each other, we want to say, oh, you're good. And you're very good. Because God thinks we're very good. So let me say a prayer for us. Dear God, thank you for thinking we are good. Thank you for loving us so much. And thank you for making this amazing creation for us. Um, not only to have, but to love and to take care of. In your name, amen. So if you'll notice the next slide here for my, uh, the sermon piece. Can we get to that next slide, Will? There it is. So I had the honor of getting to visit the grave of Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, last week while I was away. Um, and also, you'll see this is a double tombstone. This is not only MLK, but this is also his wife, Coretta. This is both, um, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, if you guys would like to see it. Um, so this is uh, one I just pulled up from Google because it was easier than, but I also did take some pictures of it. Um, and so this is the double gravestone of MLK Jr., Reverend MLK Jr., and his wife, Coretta. Um, and I got to see this when I was in Atlanta last week. Uh, he was born in Atlanta and also um, obviously was buried in Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta, Georgia was a really big landmark moment for the uh, civil rights movement. Lots of civil rights uh, mo mo moments happened in Atlanta, Georgia. I also got to see his church uh, where he preached, uh, which is called Ebenezer Baptist. Um, and we also got to walk through a little museum that was dedicated to his and Coretta's uh, ministry to our world. And so you'll notice here on the screen, it's their tombstone, and this tombstone sat in the middle of water. And to the left, obviously you can't see in this picture, but to the left of this picture was small little waterfalls that went down, and each of the steps had words that said, we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. 
Oh, I love that verse. Um, and also, MLK has also said this, but this is a verse taken right from the Bible, um, from the book of Amos, and it's the words of God, where God says, you have given me sacrifices, you have sang songs to me, but I don't want any of it until justice rolls down. You can keep your music, you can keep your sacrifices until justice rolls down like water. I don't want any of it. That's coming from God. And as I witnessed all this, there were times I was brought to tears. MLK is a big uh, person that I deeply, deeply admire. And this entire museum had a sense of hopefulness to it, to the change that he was able to enact, him and his wife, and obviously the countless hunt thousands of people that were with them. It wasn't just a movement of MLK Jr. It was a movement of many uh, civil rights active advocates. Um, but it was also hard to not fully forget that MLK was only 39 when he was murdered. And as we read about his history, they had these two walls. One wall was dedicated to Coretta's history, and one wall was dated to, uh, uh, to Martin's history. And we read about his history. He had had, if I'm remembering correctly, at least three other assassination attempts on his life during his short time alive. Two included bombings at his house, one, they found a bomb that never went off, and another bomb went off when he wasn't even home, but his wife and newborn child was, and thankfully they were uninjured. And one time, a woman stabbed him in the middle of a busy street, and the surgeon told him he was lucky he didn't sneeze because the tip of the blade was touching his aorta, and if he had as much sneezed, he would have bled out. The FBI during this time were trying to stall the civil rights movement. They even sent a letter to him at one point disguised to look like a letter from a trusted black friend, and the letter told MLK to kill himself. His and Coretta's early life was fraught with attempted murder, imprisonment, and threats. The words on his tomb hit even heavier when you think about how hard his life must have been doing activist work. The tombstone includes one of the, his most famous lines from one of his last sermons. Free at last, free at last. Thank God I am free at last. I found myself constantly asking how he found the power to keep moving. How did any of the civil rights leaders and activists find the power to continue? One of the practical reasons is many of them just didn't have any other choice other than to be activists. It was about, for them, their own human rights. It was about fighting for dignity. It was about fighting for their right to even take up space in America. They didn't have the choice to just get to stand on the sidelines. The very color of their skin was a political moment. But I also want to look, because, you know, this is church, I want to look at our, the faith component here, too. Many civil rights leaders were pastors and churchgoers, specifically the black churches, when many white churches were sadly sitting this one out. For MLK, his faith spurred him into action. His faith kept him fighting for justice. His faith gave him a prophetic voice. His faith made him stand out in a time when that was not safe. And when I was reading the gospel this week, I couldn't stop thinking about the civil rights leaders who took the teachings of Jesus to heart. Not only to heart, but it spurred them to action, which is exactly what Jesus is calling for in our Gospels today. It's how the book of Matthew wraps up. These are the last several verses in that book of Matthew. And it's Jesus giving a pep talk to his disciples. We don't get 
Jesus going up to heaven at the end of Matthew. Instead, it ends with him telling the disciples to go and change the world. Jesus says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching, to that, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And we are given authority by Jesus, who reminds us in the gospel that all authority in heaven and earth has been given to him. And it's important here to know what Jesus means by authority. Because oftentimes, these verses have been misconstrued. Some of these verses have been used to do exactly what the black church was fighting against. It was used to submit and to obey. It was used in ways to use manifest destiny in America and to hurt Native people. Because to make disciples mean killing anyone who doesn't agree or fighting anyone who isn't a Christian. But that's not what Jesus means. Because Jesus never, ever works the way that empires work, that the kingdoms of uh, earth work. Jesus is about heavenly kingdom. The only time the word authority is used in the book of Matthew for Jesus, the only time that Jesus ever talks about having authority is when Jesus is forgiving and when Jesus is healing. That's it. Jesus never used his authority to hold other people down. Jesus never used his authority to be a dictator. Jesus always acted with authority, but never authoritatively. And now he gives that authority to the church. Jesus gives that authority to heal. Jesus gives that authority to forgive to the church. The civil right movement was the church using its power the way Christ had intended. Because ultimately the power and authority that is given to Christ, and thus in turn he gives to us, is the power to do justice. There's a liturgy for the Sabbath from a synagogue in Illinois that paraphrased Psalm 99.4 in this way. Your power is your love of justice. Your power is your love for justice. That's where civil rights advocates like MLK Jr., Coretta King, just Julian Bond, Rosa Parks, and many more found their power through the grace of Christ that enabled their deep love of justice. Our power shines through our ability to want goodness for all people. Too long that all people have fairness and can be shown the same compassion and love that we receive from our God. So may we never be the barrier that keeps someone from knowing that they are loved by God. May we instead be the people that tear down walls and help people feel that they are loved and help them know that they are loved and have compassion that they are forgiven. Because we have been given authority. The authority to heal and to forgive. And we can do that all the more powerfully when we do this together. Because we need each other. That's the human, the human narrative is that we need community. And MLK Jr. spoke of this. Uh, MLK Jr. had a thing that he called the beloved community. He said, the beloved community is a realistic vision of an achievable society. So this is not a pipe dream. He believed this to be something achievable. One in which problems and conflict exist, but are resolved peacefully and without bitterness. In this community, caring and compassion drive political policies that then support the worldwide elimination of poverty and hunger 
and all forms of bigotry and violence. The beloved community is a state of heart and mind. It is a spirit of hope and goodwill that transcends all boundaries and barriers and embraces all creation. At its core, it is an engine of reconciliation. In Bible study this week, we spoke about having the power to do justice. All the women in our Bible study are old enough to remember when women couldn't have leadership in churches. We had great conversations about women pastors and how it can still be hard for them to be treated as equally as the men in their field. They spoke about how powerful it is to see women in our communities taking on leadership. And I've heard enough, you know, there's still so many churches that don't allow this. I just spoke to a young person who came to our church and they said, I didn't even know women could preach. And they said, maybe I would have considered seminary if I had known. And I would be remiss if I didn't take this moment to say, anyone, especially ladies, it is never too late to feel that call in your life. Or if you have a sermon on your mind and you don't want to go to seminary, please talk to me or Dennis. You, there, this is not just for pastors up here. If you'd like to give a sermon or you feel something on your mind, come and talk to us. We'd love to have some diversity up here preaching. So please keep that in mind. Um, because as the church, may we continue to uplift. May we continue to tear down walls. May we continue to uplift the women of our communities and encourage them to leadership. Because our power is our love for justice. And it breaks my heart when I think about how many great pastors and leaders we've missed out on over these years. And if you were born before 2009, you remember a time when the church didn't accept LGBTQ pastors or perform their marriages. Once again, it breaks my heart to think about how many great pastors we missed out on. And so may we push more for equality. May we be brave and speak out against harmful things, harmful things that hurt women, harmful things like anti-trans legislation that is being pushed in many states at a frighteningly fast pace. Because our power is our love for justice. We don't have to look hard for prejudices in our world. I just named two of them. As the church, we need to be there. We need to defend the defenseless and lift up the marginalized. We need to protect our elderly. We need to listen to our children. Because our power is in our love for justice. That is our guiding force. God has given us this authority. So let's act upon it. So may we fight the good fight. May we be brave when the time calls for it. May we as the church strive to be a beloved community. May we love others and remember to love ourselves. And may we remember that our power has been given to us by Jesus himself. And may we love justice. And may we love it enough to fight for it. Amen.
living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to death. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. Holy Three, Holy One, you call the church to make disciples of all nations. Encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel and direct all the baptized into lives of humble service and witness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Holy Three, Holy One, you spoke creation into being and called it good. Protect lands and waters threatened by human misuse and sustain living creatures of every kind, wild animals, birds, <coughs> fish, and every creeping thing. C continue to fashion us into worthy stewards of your bountiful creation you called good. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you have given humankind authority over the earth. Raise up leaders who listen earnestly, speak honestly, and govern thoughtfully. Heal divisions between nations so that we might beat our weapons into implements of peace and practice war no more. Keep safe those of our fellowship who serve in our nation's military. John Julian, Keith DePue, Christiana Bouchon Emmanuel, and Patrick Wise. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Holy Three, Holy One, as we celebrate Pride and the LBGTQ plus community, we ask that you make yourself known through your diverse creation. Teach us to listen more deeply and advocate for our LGBTQ plus siblings so that they can share their pain and frustrations. We give you thanks, bold creator, for the expansiveness of human expression and the persistence of hope over fear. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Holy Three, Holy One, Teach us how to eliminate the doctrine of discovery from our contemporary rhetoric and programs and to elect the practice of accompaniment with native peoples instead of a missionary endeavor to redeem them. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you promise to be with us always to the end of the age. Surround those most in need of your healing presence, any who are lonely, all who are grieving, and those who are sick, especially Kath Kathy, Sherwood, Gail, Deb, Betty, Bo, Ruth, Carl, Suzanne, Brian, and Jennifer, Scott, Joanne, Ron, Sony, Doris, Jennifer, Becca, Laura, Steve, Eleanor, Evan, Michael. For all who have been impacted by gun violence and other violent crimes, and for the residents and former residents of the Kutztown Mobile Home Park who are being unjustly treated by the owners of the park. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Holy Three, Holy One, you set the earth on its axis, and we experience the seasons. Strengthen those enduring challenges this summer, those who suffer in the heat, 
tillers of the soil who are experiencing the specter of drought, parents overwhelmed by child care responsibilities, and children experiencing food insecurity outside of school. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you invite us to rejoice and be glad for those who have reason to celebrate in these days on the occasion of their birthdays, especially Alan Robertson, Lee Shannon, Michael Moyer, Lucille Bubbin Moyer, Jan Bond, Michael Reffy III, Owen Keglovitz, Andrea Orwig, Gail Sanders, Bennett Collier, Alice Ron, Jim Johnson, and Mike Walter. God in your mercy, hear our prayers. Holy Three, Holy One, as another academic year draws to a close, we celebrate the accomplishment of those who have graduated or are graduating this spring, especially Brody Graff, Colin Pepe, Ramsey Ross, Rachel Town, Ashley Wenzel, and others of our faith community are known to us. Be their guide and strength as they embark upon the next phase of their life's journey. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you give rest when our work is done. We give thanks for all the saints who now rest in you, confident in the promise of resurrection, life, and the age to come. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. You may pass peace. God's peace, everyone. Peace be with you. And with you. Before we go into our offering, um, Sally Schofstall just wanted to make a quick announcement. She said it fit perfectly with the sermon, so she's going to make a, a brief announcement here. Hello. Um, hello, hello. So um, uh, may, maybe you don't know, I live in Lehigh County and I happen to practice law there. But at any rate, I found out this past week that Lehigh County is creating a program called the Pardon Project. And it's um, the DA in Lehigh County, with some other social services um, individuals, the project is they're asking for volunteers to be 
pardon coaches. And the, what we would do would be work, be trained to work with individuals in the, who are incarcerated in the penal system and they're asking for pardons to the um, pardon board. And the coaches would be helping them get their paperwork together. So it would be um, helping them to like articulate their story and do their paperwork, organize it in a way that um, you're basically putting the, the individual's um, situation in the best light that you can, and hopefully they would um, end up successful with their pardon request. So the training is going to be June 26th, and I'm going to do it. And uh, Seth just inspired me to like ask if anybody else is interested in doing it, um, let me know, and I can give you the training information and the materials, and uh, we can go from there. I think there are. Uh, I think it was on the order of maybe like 20 counties in Pennsylvania who are doing this, um, this program. It hasn't yet gotten to Berks County. I, I would have to say Berks County is a little behind in terms of like rights. But at any rate, um, that's a personal opinion and uh, thank you for allowing me to share that. <laughs> but, but there it is, that's the concept and the training would be um, June 26th. So see me after the service if you're interested and, and thank you very, much Seth for trusting me to do this. Great. Thank you, Sally. And like Sally said, if anyone has questions, please talk to her. Um, and uh, yeah, now we will go into our offering. <laughs>
Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks for It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of angels and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, and earth are full of your glory, full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And for those who are communing remotely from here, as well as anyone in person who is using the small cup with the wafer, we ask you now to take that and take your wafer, take the bread, and receive the body of Christ. Take and eat. The body of Christ is given for you. And for drink as well, receive from the drink, for it is the blood of Christ. Drink the blood of Christ shed for you. And for those communing here in person, you will come forward and the, the uh, grape juice will be to my left and the wine to the right. We will use the form of intinction and there are also gluten-free wafers should anyone uh, request that. And you may be seated. Yes, sorry about that. Okay. I think they usually have to. Oh, there it is. I didn't see it. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The 
body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. given for you the body of Christ given for you the body of Christ given for you Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks to the smallest seed, bless and keep and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Amen.
in peace, share the harvest. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. all the refreshments afterwards please stick around amy made a delicious bundt cake over here so please stick around and uh talk to all your fellow churchgoers <laughs>